everyone. You are here at our general nursing information meeting. This is a mandatory meeting for anyone that wants to apply to our nursing program. And the reason we make this mandatory is that so when you complete your application, you will do it correctly and you won't be put in the incomplete pile, which happens every year. Okay, so I'm trying to prevent that from all the work you're doing and your prerequisites. I want you to have a good application and be competitive. Okay, so my name is Dr. Connie Tellis and I am the nursing program director. And I have been around Chabot a long time. I graduated here in 1981, four years after high school. And after that, I went to work at St. Rose Hospital right down the street for 20 years. And then I decided I wanted to do more. And I went back and got my master's degree. Well, after my AA, I went to Cal State and got my bachelor's, got my master's at San Jose State. And then in 2009, I got my doctorate at USF. So I'm here to say that Chabot is the first degree you're going to get in nursing because it is a long, very rewarding career and you can do so much and go so far with it. You can, there's a doctorate. My, my initials are DNP and that's Doctorate of Nursing Practice. And that just means I've gone to school, I think, for over nine years. Kind of. So anyway, there's only 1% in California that have their doctorate, but more and more are popping up all over. It doesn't mean I, I see patients in the hospital. What it means is I am, uh, have a lot of theory knowledge and, and clinical and things for nursing programs. That's kind of where my basis is. Okay, so today is a one hour presentation. We're gonna videotape it here so that you can see it online so you don't have to worry about taking massive notes. These PowerPoints are also available on our website. And I will tell you we have a very good website. If you go to Chabot College, and type nursing in the search box, you'll get to our website and we're going to show it to you after the presentation and show you how you can find your way around the website and find different forms that you might need. Okay? Um, try to keep your questions to the end because I think I'll probably cover most things and then we'll do a question and answer at the end. And um, after the presentation is over, if you have anything privately you'd like to come up and talk to me, um, I'm available and I'll hang around a little bit if you have a, an individual circumstance. Sometimes our counselor comes, I don't see him here yet, but um, he might be here. His name is Ernesto Victoria and his email is at the end of this presentation and he does a lot with nursing. He's a retired counselor but he, he helps us out with our basic counseling for the nursing and dental hygiene program. All right? Okay, so let's get started. So Chabot, program, Chabot College Nursing Program, we've been around over 50 years. All right, we put out a lot of nurses in the Bay Area and we have a very good reputation. If you graduate from our program, you will be able to take care of a patient in the hospital. Um, we have high standards, all of us faculty. We wanna make sure you're good enough to take care of us or our family members. So it is a hard program, our standards are high, but we do have a good reputation. All right, we're gonna get in a little bit on the NCLEX pass rate. If you don't know yet, NCLEX stands for National Council Licensing Exam for RN. You will get an associate degree here at Chabot, and that doesn't make you a registered nurse. You have to pay, pass this state exam to be a registered nurse, okay? We give you the degree, but it allows you to take the test. Our pass rate for the test has been 96 to 100% for the last 10 years. And I'm gonna pull up the Board of Nursing's website after and show you how to check the school's pass rate because you want to make sure you go to a nursing program with a really good pass rate because you don't want to go there for four years and not be passing the NCLEX exam, okay? All right, so that's a little bit about Chabot. Um, we have a skills lab here, you can see a picture. This is a lab where we have six mannequins. They're over on the side of the room. They're kind of <coughs> hidden in the corners. And what we do here is we practice everything to, you want to do on a patient here in the lab. We don't practice on patients in the hospital, but we practice on our mannequins, okay? So we have to be competent before we do it on a patient. And that's what we do in our skills lab, all right? This is just a picture of some of our students that have graduated over the years. We also do flu clinics here with flu season. We like to give a lot of flu injections, so we do that. Um, and then there's, this is our simulation lab, and that opened in 2011. 
and I am the simulation coordinator. Um, it is a passion of mine. I really like working with the mannequins. So what that means is we have four real life mannequins and they have computers on the inside of them and we control them wirelessly in a control room. So we can make them vomit, have a heart attack, deliver a baby, they have pulse rates, heart rates, they talk. Um, they're really cool. And what's nice about this is the students will go in there and take care of these patients and the instructors are behind the window. So you're going to work together as a team and learn how to care for these critically ill patients. And you're going to do 21 scenarios over the two years in our program. And I'll tell you, managers have talked to me at various conferences and said students that do simulation in the nursing program are better prepared to care for critical events when they occur on the hospital unit. Okay, so that's something about our simulation lab. And you can see here from the picture, you see that's the baby and that's Noel. And it's actually a crank system inside that pushes the baby out. We can do it in warp speed so we can deliver a baby in four minutes, which is pretty cool because that's never going to happen in real life, right? And this is just some students here. We take our photos a lot in the sim lab. We just got a new mannequin and um, we're getting it in two weeks and it is actually a five-year-old child. And from 2011 when this first opened to now, the mannequins are much more advanced. Their eyes will track you. So if you stand within 12 inches, the eyes will follow you. And this baby's face will actually turn a little bit and follow you. So it really gets kind of creepy what they can do um, with these mannequins, okay? All right. So now, what are we going to talk about today? Well, one of the things I want you all to know is what it is to be a nurse. Because it's not like TV, it's not Grey's Anatomy or Nurse Jackie, okay? Um, there's not good looking doctors all over the place. Um, but it is really hard work. You can be on your feet for 12 hours. You're taking care of patients when they're at their worst. So they're grumpy because they're in pain. They're not happy. And it's our job to protect them and make them feel better. So how do you know if you really want to be a nurse? There's two really good movies out there, OK? The American Nurse and Angels in America. They actually follow around nurses and videotape them. And you can see if this is something that you want to spend your career doing. Because I'll tell you, every year we get a student that drops out in the first few weeks, says, I can't handle the smells in a hospital or they didn't know there was so much computer work because nowadays all of our documentation is on the computer, okay? So um, a lot of computer work, a lot of administering medications. It, it is hard work. So make sure you wanna be a nurse before you go into the program. This program is very difficult and we're gonna take a lot of your patients and you're gonna have to study hard, a lot of your life, you know, for two years while you're in our program. So um, it is very difficult. I'm not saying it's not rewarding. I love nursing, and I think it's a great career. My daughter's a nurse. Um, but make sure you want to do this work before you go into it. A lot of people say they want it for the money, and that's not going to last when it gets really difficult. The money is good, too, though. All right, so we're going to talk about how to get into the program, um, how we select our students, and then how to apply. We're actually going to show you an envelope and what goes in the envelope so there's no confusion by the time you apply. All right? And if you're, I, I saw your hands before we started. A lot of you are going to apply so you know you have till the last day in January to apply. Okay? All right. So we only have the Hayward campus. We used to have one out in Livermore, but right now it's just the Hayward campus. And like I said, we've been open for over 50 years. So we've graduated almost 2,000 nurses here in the Bay Area, all over California, and sometimes they move out of state to get jobs, all right? Our NCLEX pass rate, that's our stellar rate, 96 to 100% for the past 10 years. And we accept 40 to 43 students every August, once a year, okay? It is a full-time program, Monday through Thursday, with Fridays, sometimes spent in the skills lab practicing your skills, and sometimes we have clinicals in the evening and on Friday also. So it is a Monday through Friday job with weekends spent studying. So it's very hard to work when you're in our program. We recommend nothing more than 20 hours a week, and that's even being generous, I would say eight hours a week, because we're gonna make you, it's like 
Let me give you an example. You all took anatomy, physio, and micro. It's like taking all three of those at once. Okay, it's like, so it's very, you know, time consuming. A lot of reading each week, a lot of homework. All right, where do we do half our education? Well, we do um, Monday and Thursday, you're here on campus for lecture and skills lab. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, you're in the hospital um, taking care of patients, all right? So we have contracts with the Bay Area hospitals and um, we go in there and care for those patients. And you can see we have um, various hospitals here in the Bay Area. Fremont Hospital is where we do our mental health and that's a 12 hour shift on a Wednesday, so that's a pretty long day. Kaiser San Leandro, we do maternity and we do med surge there. St. Rose Hospital, we do med surge. Uh, Eden, med surge also. And then Stanford Valley Care is med surge. It seems like we do a lot of med surge and that's true because you're gonna do um, fundamentals and then adult health one, two, and three. So there's a lot of med surge in nursing because that's your basic um, hospitalized patient. And then you're going to get nine week courses for pediatrics, obstetrics, and mental health. Okay? And then we have UCS, UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital in Oakland. That is where we do our pediatrics. So we're really lucky to be in Oakland Hospital. We're one of the few community colleges that um, is allowed into that hospital um, to take care of their patients. So we have really good places for good experiences while you're in our program. All right, prerequisites. Um, you have to complete all seven prerequisites before you apply to the nursing program. So everything needs to be completed this month if you're um, finishing up your courses here in the fall semester. It takes until next month for your instructors to input all their grades. So if you are applying this semester, make sure your grades are posted on your transcripts before you put in your application because we don't want to see anything in progress we want a completed grade there because we're going to use that grade to calculate some of your points for the merit-based criteria. <laughs> All right. Um, we have uh, a GPA requirement. 2.5 is the lowest in the sciences, and you can only have one C. So the higher your GPA in anatomy, physiology, and microbiology, the more points you're going to get. The rationale for that is that they've done research and students that do good in the sciences are more likely to do good in the nursing program. So that's weighed heavily in all nursing programs pretty much around California. All right. Um, only one W or failing grade and then we subtract two points on those sciences. If you have more than one W or failing grade, we remove um, five points from your merit-based criteria. Okay. We also have a seven year recency period now on these sciences um, and they must be from a US regionally accredited college or university. If you have a question about that, ask a counselor. But I think most of them in the Bay Area are. Um, upper division coursework will not be accepted in these sciences and that is a board policy. So what that means is if you took an upper division microbiology up at Cal State East Bay and it was a junior or a senior level course, that will not be, you can't apply that course to the basics to our anatomy, physio, and micro, okay? The rationale for that is they want to give the community college the advantage um, of getting in the program. They're looking into these policies though and they might be updated um, shortly, but right now that's what stands. If you have questions about if your course was upper division, ask at the, after the presentation and we'll try to answer it for you. All right, sciences, those three sciences, we accept four to five semester units and they must include a lab. And the lab cannot be online. That means a face-to-face -face or wet lab, okay? That makes it more uh, meaningful to the student. You know, you do the interaction with the, the cadaver or whatever you're doing for anatomy versus watching it on the computer. You're actually touching things, okay? So we want face-to-face -face labs. Let's see. The application period, you have to have all the sciences completed after 8-1-13. That's the seven years, okay? And more and more schools now are doing this seven-year recency. So combined sciences. If you took a combined science class, for example, Chabot Biology 50 is called an A&P class and it does not meet the nursing requirements. 
because that's only one semester and it doesn't include a lab. So realize, must be a two semester anatomy and, and physiology uh, must be taken at the same college. For example, if you took anatomy and physiology one at Ohlone, you should take anatomy and physiology two at Ohlone. Don't take part one there and then part two at another college. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right. Other courses that are fixed that we look for the GPA on are your English, sociology, psychology, and communications. Those are all required by the Board of Registered Nursing, which um, approves our educational plan, so we must follow what they've recommended. Okay, and so substitutions or waivers are not considered. All right, advanced placement. Anybody in here from high school going to use an advanced placement um, class for any of the prerequisites? If you do, you have to get the transcript of your advanced placement exam, and that has to be submitted with your transcripts. Okay? All right. So how do you apply? All prerequisites must be completed by this semester, the end of December. Application is open November 1st until the last day of January. You have to do two applications. First, you have to apply to Chabot College, and then you have to apply to the nursing program, OK? It's pretty easy to apply to Chabot College, though. It takes 24 hours. The only requirement is a high school diploma. All right, um, let's see. You apply through ClassWeb for Chabot College. Our applications for the nursing program are online, and we're going to walk you through that so you can see. And I would also encourage you to apply to other nursing programs because um, it'll increase your chances. Nursing programs are impacted. We typically get 400 applications for 40 spots, and that's pretty common at nursing programs. So you know, you have Ohlone right down the street. You have Cal State East Bay. We have. Um, San Mateo across the bay. There's lots of community colleges in the Bay Area, and I would encourage you to apply to as many as you can, at least four to five to increase your chances. Then if you get into two or three, you've got your pick, okay? Um, so be aware of what an RN does before you enter our program, okay? All right, so good to see a counselor. We have counselors here in building 700. There is um, a requirement with the counselors for the fixed and the general education courses you're going to need for the AA degree. You know, you're going to have to take your American institutions, American cultures, things like that. And the counselor will help you get ready um, to complete all the sciences and everything you need to graduate from the nursing program. The theory is we want you to have all your general ed completed before you get into the nursing program. For those two years, we're going to keep you busy. So don't leave any courses to complete, okay, finish all the prerequisites and all of the courses you need for your degree before you get in our program. If you're going to use um, foreign or international transcripts, you have to be, have them evaluated and um, a counselor can give you advice on that. If you're going to not going to use your foreign transcripts or any classes internationally, um, you don't have to do the international evaluation, you'll just use the courses that you took over here in the United States. All right, this is our number for our counseling. Um, it's building 700 here, and there's also counseling out at Las Positas, um, our sister college. All right, let's talk about another requirement, the ATITs. ATI stands for Assessment Testing Institute, and the TEAS, or T-E-A-S, is the Test of Essential Academic Skills. This is another test that's going to test your knowledge of science, math, and English, the prerequisites that you have to take to get in our program. The higher the score you get, the more points you're going to get on our merit-based criteria. How many of you have taken the T's already? OK, who wants to tell me something about them? How about you? Tell me what it was like. Um, it was like a more advanced SATs. Advanced SATs. Yeah. OK. Computer test. Four subjects, and it's timed, okay, math, English. On math, you get to use a calculator now, and that's, that's fairly new for this last edition, so that's helpful. 
Um, for the English, you might have an article you have to read, and then you have to answer questions that are related to that article. So you have to have a good reading speed. A lot of students get, they score weak on reading because they don't read as much. And I would really encourage you to practice before you take the T's test. You only get two opportunities. If you fail and a failure rate is less than 62% on your first attempt, you need to complete remediation. I'll develop a plan for you. Maybe remediate on science or math wherever you're weak. And then you can take the test again within a year. But it's going to put off your chances of entering and applying to our program this year. Okay, so it's very important to study before the T's test. Um, your ticket that you all got today will pay for a free ATI test here with us. But um, please, only if you're going to apply to Chabot. If you don't plan on applying sh to Chabot, don't use the free ticket because we only have so many and we like to use them for our applicants. Okay, but yeah, it's um, 180 minutes, the T's test. You get your results right away. ATI has testing booklets and modules that you can purchase to help. But do study for about a month, I would say, before you take your T's test. Okay? All right. Um, so once again, the passing score is 62%. And this is a transcript from ATI T's, and you can see the sample here. So this person got a 69.3% on the ATI T's. The test before that was the test, the T's 5. Okay, we're not accepting the T's 5 anymore. We're on to the ATI T's. So you can see they got 62% on the T's 5 and 69 on the T's, ATI T's. So that's passing. All right. 72, this is a good passing score. I also want to say that it's going to tell us how many times you've taken this test. All right, it says a test attempt, one of one. So we're going to look at that. We don't want you to take it three times or two times. We're going to take the first attempt. <coughs> Some schools will allow your best score out of three attempts. I think Cal State East Bay does that. We only take your first attempt. OK, so just realize that. Because you're taking the same test, and of course your score is going to get higher each time you take that test. Um, this person is not passing the score. You can see a 56.7%. And these are the four areas that we evaluate, OK? Reading, math, science, and English and language usage. Over here, you can see the percentile rank, OK? And there's national programs, and all ADN programs are light blue. So for the light blue areas, they have to be at least 50% <coughs> to pass that subject area. So for instance, 12% here on reading. So out of 100 students, you're number 12. That's not going to make it in the nursing program. You're going to need at least to be 50 or above. OK, so this person needs to remediate for reading. Um, they're good on math, 54%, over 50, right? Science, 26. They need to take another science class if we can find one for them. And then English is 45. It's close, but it's not the 50% 50, 50 that we need. OK, so that's how we evaluate the T-score. And that's how I develop a remediation plan. All right. If you're offered a space in our program, we send you an email on your zone email. We also send a postcard. And you'll be notified in about in May if you get in or not. So always have your zone mail sent to your home mail so you won't miss it. And also make sure we have the correct address. <clears throat> Last year, we sent out emails and postcards to our top 40, and 15 did not respond to us. We waited two weeks. We don't know what happened to them. When we don't hear from students, we go on to the alternate list, and we start picking the alternates to fill our class. <clears throat> OK? So that's how we do it. If you're offered a spot, OK, within 48 hours, you need to do a background check and a drug screen. To do the background check, you need a social security number. This is for the hospital. They want to know what's happened in your life in the past seven years. Do you have any felonies, misdemeanors, anything, DUIs that may have a problem with you being a nurse? OK? Um, so the hospital wants to know, and they will decide if you can do their, your nursing education in their facility. 
depending on the background. Most hospitals, if you were a teenager and it was been years ago, they're pretty much okay with that if it was one instance. If it was two, they think, well, that's kind of silly. For instance, one DUI is okay, but the minute you get two DUIs, the hospitals don't want you practicing in their facility, okay? So if you have a background, come up and talk to me after this and, and I'll explain to you what I think. All right, um, the drug screen. 10 panel urine drug screen. If a drug screen is positive for any non-prescriptive drugs, you're not eligible to enter the program. Okay, you have to be drug free. And I also want to tell you that marijuana is, is not a, a legally federally, so you can't have a positive drug screen with marijuana. The hospitals do not want their nurses to be under the influence of marijuana while they're in the facility. And realize marijuana stays in your system for 40, 30 days. So um, if you do partake, stop for a month before nursing school and then wait till you get through nursing school and then <laughs> do what you want after that, okay? You're out of my jurisdiction after that. But, um, you know, hospitals do random drug screens too now. Uh, I have my son-in-law is an anesthesiologist and every once in a while they come in and say, okay, time for a drug screen, go, go in this little cup in the bathroom. So you don't know when they'll do random drug screens in hospitals. All right, so the background um, review. We do have a webinar that the Board of Nursing did and this is the link for it. It's a one hour webinar. If you have a background, when you want to take the NCLEX, you have to do a um, live scan. That's going to go back your whole life with your fingerprints, okay? If you have a background, you have to disclose everything to the Board of Nursing. They will do an investigation. They have five investigators, and they will decide if you can take the NCLEX exam at that time. So realize it affects your NCLEX testing ability also. All right, so how do we select? There's two ways that community colleges can select their incoming class. One is random selection, and that's um, throw all the names in a computer and spit out 40. 40 for the first class, for the first um, choice, and then we do 60 alternates. We pick 100, okay? That's if it was random selection. We now use merit-based selection. So that means we have a 100-point system, and we have a score sheet, and we're going to score you accordingly. And I'll show you the 100-point uh, system, all right? Uh, most of the colleges, community colleges, are going to this merit-based system at 100 points. Okay, Ohlone just did, and I know San Mateo merit. Not sure about merit, I think they might be lottery still. Okay, but many more are going to the system. And there's, um, I think, seven sections, and they're each weighed accordingly. And the seven sections aren't what we pick, but the Chancellor's Office for Community Colleges, they pick to the seven sections. Okay, so that's what we have to follow in using the um, merit-based selection criteria. All right, so first you're all gonna apply Right, you're going to send your application in, and um, it's going to be electronically online. You're also going to submit an envelope like this with other documents, okay? And I'll tell you about those shortly. But the applicants are ranked according to their criterion score. So 100 points is possible. So you may ask, do I need, do I need to be in 90 to 100 points to get in? And my response would say no. Um, it's typically like a bell curve. I would say we have a few 60s, 70s, and 80s are at the top, and then the 90s, and very few in the 90s. So most of our students are in the 70 area, 70s. But you never know. Each year it's different. You know, you might get a class where a lot of 80s are in there, and it's harder to get in. But that's how we typically have, okay, so you don't need 90 points to get in. I would apply and see what we get in our applicant pool, okay? So how do we do it? We take the top third um, with 40 applicants and 50 alternates and we select them. Now what do we do? An example is if we had 300 applicants, the top third is the top 100, okay? Out of that 100, we take 40 applicants and 60 alternates. As the, as the applicant says, no, I got into Cal State East Bay, we say, fine, we call alternate number one. We go all the way down the list until the first day of school, which is August 19th usually, 
and we want 40 to 43 students on that day. Okay, we fill to almost two weeks before class starts because we want to start with 40 to 43 and we want to end with 40 to 43. And if you drop out in two weeks, we can't replace you because you've learned so much content. Okay, so that's what, make sure you want these prized spots. All right, and once again, I said you're going to be notified by US mail and by your zone mail email account. This is the um, seven sections that I told you about on our merit-based criteria. And which areas are highly weighed? 3A, 40 points, science GPA. And section seven is 30 points, your ATIT's first attempt. So that's 70 points just for those two areas. So if you haven't taken your sciences yet, take them one at a time and study really hard and get a B or an A in your sciences because that'll increase your chance of getting in the nursing program. Also, when you take your T's test, make sure you study before you take it, okay? All right, those seven sections you need to submit to us validating criteria, okay? So, for each section there's something you need to turn in. The first one is your degree. If you have an extra degree, Another, if you have an AA degree already or a bachelor's degree, we give you five points. But you have to show us the transcript that says the degree was awarded, okay? Section two is healthcare. We give you a couple points if you have healthcare experience, a CNA, pharmacy technician, LVN, things like that. We give you extra points for that. But you have to provide um, proof uh, that you have a license and also a work letter, because you have to have at least 500 hours in the last 18 months to be considered to get those points for your healthcare experience. Um, grades, once again, three A's, your fixed courses. We use your transcripts. Um, section four is life events. We give you two points for that. And there's four or five areas. I'll show you when we get to that, when we review the score. You can only get one of them. And one is need to work. So everybody should get those two points, okay? If you're a veteran, we give you five extra points, but we need to see a DD214 honorable discharge notice to get those points. Uh, language, if you speak another language, we give you two points. Language could be anything, sign language, Spanish, Tagalog, anything like that. Um, and then the T score, and we have to have the T's results, and that's how we score get the points for the T's. All right, so now how do you apply? Um, this is how you apply to Chabot College, www.chabotcollege.edu. Hit to the apply button. All right, you're gonna go to this student services and financial aid tab. And then you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna see this little medical sign here and it's gonna say Chabot nursing application. If you click on that right now, it'll open up, okay? If you click on it in February, it won't open. It's only open during the times when we take applications. Now, I would tell you, before you enter anything on this application, you need to have in front of you copies of all your transcripts, okay? Because it's gonna say, when did you take anatomy? And you're gonna have to say, fall 2015. You have to know the exact dates. You also have to record every college you ever attended. We have multiple lines because we want to know where you've been before, okay? Even if you just took PE at Ohlone 10 years ago, we want to know that. So you have to list all the colleges ever attended. So you've got to have all your transcripts in front of you. So when you order transcripts to be sent to us, you're going to order one to be put in your envelope and if you've ever ordered a transcript, they have to come in a sealed envelope, okay? So it has to be in a sealed envelope like this, sealed, and then it goes in here for your supporting documentation for transcripts. Now, if you've only been to Chabot or Las Positas, you don't need to send us your transcripts because we have those available to us. A lot of times transcripts now are sent electronically. And on one of the next few slides, I have the electronic address where you would send electronic transcripts, okay? The thing about electronic, when you order them, keep your receipt because that's proof that you have ordered them. If somehow they never got sent, you can have proof to show us while well, you ordered them 
So then we have to give you, you know, benefit of the doubt. All right? All right, so you hit that button there. Um, it's going to take you to this online application. You're going to complete all the questions. It's mostly about, you know, courses you took and grades you got. Um, and then you're going to hit the submit button, okay? Now, if you call us the next day and say, I forgot something, we can't reopen it. It's a one-time deal, okay? Um, once you hit submit, it's entered. The one thing that you're going to get at the end of the application is a consent page, okay? A confirmation page. And you probably can't see this, but it looks like this, okay? And it's going to have a little square here, and that's where you're going to tape that information ticket that you got today, okay? And you're going to sign this. This is your consent that everything you entered on that application is correct to the best of your knowledge, okay? If you lose your ticket, you know, call the office. We'll give you another one because we know we have your signature that you did attend one of these meetings, okay? All right. You're also going to get an application checklist. And it's going to, if you go through this, then everything you put in your envelope is going to be correct. All right? It's going to ask you for that confirmation page, um, the criterion cover page, or any documentation that's required. Official transcripts are going to go in this envelope, sealed. And your unofficial ATIT's results. Okay, here's a copy of your unofficial ATIT's results. What that means is after you take the test, you can print this. Now, if we offer you a spot in our program, we're going to want an official ATIT's results. But right now, for the application, just unofficial. One page, okay, goes in the envelope. All right. Um, and then you're going to mail it to nursing application box five. Now, we don't want them hand delivered. We want them mailed to box five. That's because nursing, we don't do the um, validation of your courses. That goes to admissions and records first, OK? So the way you send it is certified mail. I would say to send everything you send to nursing programs, certified mail. It costs like $2. That means somebody signs for this, and you get a postcard back that says they received it. Because you know we get hundreds of these, and we could lose them. So send it certified mail, all right? Um, okay. Uh, the other, and, and also make a copy of all your materials before you send them to us in case it gets lost or misplaced. The other thing that you're going to enter in this envelope, this is your score sheet for your 100 points, okay? We're going to let you fill it out as to what you think you should get. And then the faculty, we go through every application once it's reviewed by admissions and records, and we add up the score and either confirm it or, you know, change. We say, no, we won't give you points for that. Okay? So that goes in your envelope also. All right. Once again, the transcripts, I think I talked about this. Um, Hand-carried applications or transcripts will not be accepted. They must be mailed. Once again, the electronic transcripts, they're sent to ccarcom at chabotcollege.edu. Okay, or if you, when you order your electronic, there should be a drop down list, hit Chabot College, and they should come to us. But once again, save your receipt. Um, okay, international transcripts, once again, if you're using those, make sure you see a counselor first. So after your application is submitted, Okay, and a and &R reviews everything. Then it comes to us, and I told you the nursing faculty, um, we look through, and Catherine, we look through all of the applications and we validate the scores. All right, this is our email addresses. So you've got my address here, C. Tellis, Ernesto, who I told you was our case manager, and then program office is Catherine Gentilomo, who's right here, and she's gonna open up our website. And we're going to show you a little bit where you can find all of these documents. OK, any questions while she's opening our website? Yes? Um, what if you're a caregiver? You don't have a certificate. Yeah, we don't give points for caregivers. You have to have a certificate or a license or gone to school for it. Yeah. 
Yes, in the back. Have to be um, like active, or you can have expired license. Yes, it has to be active, and you have to have been working in the last 18 months at least 500 hours. Say you're a CNA and you got it 10 years ago and you never worked. Well, we're not going to give you the points for that. Okay. Right behind you, the gentleman. So for the application, there's the class one and then there's the envelope. If we send uh, transcripts electronically, do we have to put the transcript in the envelope? No. Put the receipt, though, that you ordered them. Okay. A copy of the electronic receipt should go in the envelope. One more here before we... Um, when we mail the package to you guys, does it have to be postmarked like a certain day before the... You want to postmark it before the 31st. And I'll tell you, I had a student once call me and say, hey, um, it was after the 31st, right? She said, I got in an accident on the way to the post office. <laughs> right? I gave her the benefit. I said, okay, if you have it to us by tomorrow, you know, postmark it now, I'll let you do it. And she never did. But yeah, don't wait until the last day in case you get in an accident on the way to the post office. <laughs> um, anyway, we've heard, all, we've heard a lot. Okay, so now this is our web page. Yeah, I'll get to the questions after, but let's just show you our web page. Right? Once again, nursing. On the left-hand side, you can see Catherine has hit registered nursing program. And this is our success rate. Now, if you look here, we do have um, an LVN to RN program, but we only take about two to three every year, and we only take them on a space available basis if some of our generic students fail. Okay, so we don't have a lot of spaces for the LVNs. Readmits, if you fail after the first semester, we will take you back a second time. You have to challenge to get back into the program, and there has to be a space. Okay? Oh, where'd it go, Catherine? Go back. No. Did I get everything on that? Was there anything left on that? Um, no. No? Oh, and then our NCLEX pass rate. And how many we graduated. So, you know, we do have a good, a fairly high attrition rate that we worked really hard to get down, but it's still rather high and it's 25%. That means 75% pass, 25% fail. Okay, it varies year to year. A little bit more, a little bit less. That means that we have a very difficult program. So um, be ready because nursing programs are very difficult. It's two years, but it's compact. All right, here's our criterion score. That's the score sheet, okay? And then if you keep scrolling down, there's six pages to it. It's going to say for number one, AA degree or higher. You get five points. The proof you need on the right-hand side is a transcript with a degree post. Foreign degree, one point. There's your healthcare experience, and it's six points uh, for the LVN or paramedic, and three points for a CNA, medical assistant, or EMT. And if you don't know, I would say, you know, submit it and let us decide. Okay? Um, let's see what else. Grade point average for your um, sciences. Look at that. If you get 3.5 to 4.0, you're going to get 40 points. Do you see how the points go up for the higher grades in your sciences? OK. And then you can see we deduct some points if you had a withdrawal or a repeat or a C or a D. Um, 3B is uh, fixed courses. We give you up to seven points there on the GPA in those fixed courses. And then one that everybody should be getting is you should get statistics. OK. Everybody gets three points if you get a C or not. Why are we pushing statistics? Because right now we have a bridge program with Cal State East Bay. After you graduate from us, if you go right up there after graduation, they will give you 15 units for passing the NCLEX, and you can get your bachelor's degree within a year. They require statistics. And I'll tell you, every year over 50% of our class goes right up to Cal State. Okay? It's a nice, easy way to get your bachelor's degree, which hospitals want. They want nurses with bachelor's degrees. There is um, the Institute of Medicine put out a white paper that they would like by 2020 all registered nurses to have a bachelor's degree. Well, now they're putting it to 225. They don't think we can make it. But all of the community colleges in the Bay Area have bridge programs with their university that's nearby. What that means is you get in. It's not impacted if you do the RN BSN Bridge. Okay, they can take as many students as we send them.
So that's nice. You can easily get into Cal State and get your bachelor's degree. And why do you need a bachelor's? Is because you know the local <coughs> hospitals, St. Rose, Eden wants a bachelor's. St. Rose, you can usually get in with an AA. Um, but most of the hospitals want you to be in a bachelor's program. And then you'll get a better chance of getting an interview. OK? All right, so the disabilities are um, two points, only one. You can't get a total of eight. OK, one of those things. But one of them is need to work. Look at that. Everybody needs to work, right? Um, and then the veteran status, proficiency in another language is two points. And we have a supporting documentation form that we're going to show you. If you speak another language, you need somebody to validate that you do. And that could be someone at your church, an instructor, a manager, preferably not your family or your best friend, OK? But realize, nursing is the most honest occupation, supposedly by the um, Gallup polls. We get polls. And um, if you say you speak Spanish, and then you go into clinical, and the instructor says, hey, you need to translate, and you can't translate because you, you lied on your application, we could dismiss you from the program. So we use the honor system. OK, so realize if you do say you get those points, make sure you do. And then your T-score. All right, you can see there, 90 to 100 on the T's, you get a 30 points. So do you see how the higher score you get on your T's, the better chance of getting in? OK? Any questions on that merit-based criteria? Yes? How do you prove that you've remediated your T's? You're going to get a form from me or wherever you took your T's. If you, the director has to complete a form for you. You have to sign it. You have to provide documentation. You submit that in your application. The form, did we receive it? The question was, how do I prove I've remediated after I failed a T's test? We have a remediation form. Do we get that by email by you, or do we have to meet with you? You have to meet with me. I've tried to email it, and it's a confusing form, so I want to sit down and talk to you about it. Yes, and that goes in your application. Then you take the T's again, and we take the, the second time you took it, that score. Was there another question about the merit-based? No? OK. I had a question. OK. So um, you guys uh, check our like, non-bio science classes, like the GPA. So if we don't meet that criteria for the GPA, do we get disqualified from the application? You mean if you don't have a 2.5 in the anatomy? I, like, not the, like the non-science classes. No, not the non. We only, can pair about, we only care about the anatomy, physiology, and microbiology, those three sciences. Right. Minimum GPA is 2.5. If you have 2.4, you're not qualified to apply. So what about for the non-science classes if you don't meet the, the GPA that's on the merit score? Um, like you what? mean for the so, fixed courses, yeah, those totally right there? Yes. I guess you'd get zero points. So it doesn't disqualify? No. That because fixed GPA doesn't disqualify. So I'm sorry, you do have to pass all of those fixed courses. So you have okay. to pass right. 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 yeah. I'm saying, but there's some other nursing term that says if you don't meet those GPAs right there, you get disqualified. Oh. Yeah, it's like one. You know, I don't okay. think we've had that issue. Okay. Hopefully, you're going to get better than us. Okay. It was just a question I had for forever. Okay. Hope I answered it. There you go. Okay. Um, all right, so this is the merit-based criterion. Now we're going to show you um, the Board of Registered Nursing's webpage. So this is rn.ca.gov, okay? Great website here. It's going to take you through, we're going to show you applicants, and then you're going to see um, over on the right-hand side, nursing programs and education. Oh, you, you can get it different. Different ways. Okay, nursing programs. All right. Yeah, pass rates or programs? Uh, let's do pass rates. So you can see the pass rates. Now I want to tell you, it lists for five years how many students students took the test and what was the passing score. Okay? Passing score in California averages 82 to 85 percent. Do not go to a school that has a pass rate of 75 percent because that means they are under warning status from the Board of Registered Nursing. And they may close. OK? So let's look here. Uh, where are we going, Catherine? Let's see ours. Chabot College. So 38 students, 100, 38, 97, 30. Do you see our pass rate there? Really good, right? OK, let's go um, to another school. What school do you want to see? 
San Mateo. Let's check out San Mateo. It's alphabetical. Sam, we're getting there. Santa Ana, Santa Rosa. Where is San Mateo? Oh, it's under C. College of San Mateo. Okay. One. There you go. I see it right there. Okay. College of San Mateo. Right there. Yay. 50, 84, 43, 79, 36, 77. So a little trouble there. Getting a little low. 46, 95, and 47, 97. They picked up their, you know what I mean? Sometimes the college just needs to concentrate and give the students a test-taking class. Something to improve how they take their tests um, is, is a strategy they use. Here's a loney. 28, 89, 73, they had a bad year, but they brought in some consultants and picked up their scores. Okay? Let's go to Unitech. How many paid their tuition? 25. Um, private schools can be very expensive. I'm a fan of community colleges. I'm a graduate of community college. Our whole program, six to 7,000. Okay? Cal State, 10 to 15. For 20000 you can get a bachelor's degree. The best deal in town, right? So let's see. Um, did we get? Oh, Unitech. OK. See, Unitech had a problem. 86, 75, 73, 72. Then they brought it up to 87 and now 90. But realize, check this out. Before you apply to the nursing program, make sure you're going to a reputable nursing program. Don't spend a lot of money for private schools because they're popping up all over the place with nursing programs if they don't have a good pass rate. Okay? All right. The other thing that you could, oh, here's unapproved. This is one in Hayward. So you could see, um, any person who graduated, um, there, there's a problem there, right? Okay, now if you want to go to pre-licensure nursing program, this will take you, it'll take you a link to all the nursing programs. So say you want to check out, let's go to Chabot. It should take us right to our webpage if it works. Yay. See what it did? So you can search all of the nursing programs um, from this site. Very good site. OK, College of Marin. There you go. College of Sequoias, way up in the, in the Sequoias. There you go. Right? OK, that's it that we have for our presentation. Now we're here for questions. So don't get up and move yet. Generic questions. In the back, yes. Can you talk louder? I can't hear. Um, is it enough to have our transcript sent to the school directly? No, you don't want to have it sent directly. You do that maybe if you just apply to Chabot. The nursing program is a separate application, and we need them in the envelope because it gets into a separate file we make for the nursing program. So, and, and even if you did it one year and you didn't get in, we don't keep them. So the next year, you have to do it all over again. So we actually need an official sealed transcript. An official sealed transcript, yes. Here? So even being a student at Shabor or Las Positas, you still need to send in your transcript? No. I don't know if you, if you heard earlier, I said if you're Shabot or Las Positas, you don't need to send us your transcripts because we have them on record. Yes, here. Um, for the stats and non-science GPA, does it have a seven-year? Uh... No. No recency on the stats. Yes. We can take the test for three years. You can with the little card. And then um, can we have like, so the transcripts are online and we have them sent to other schools if you don't get in? I think you have to pay for each transcript sent to the other. Usually the school will take an unofficial, which is you can print as many as you want. But if you get offered a spot, they want the official transcript. I think it's $25 to send the official T's transcript to the school. Um, and, and after this, um, well, if you email Catherine, that RN program, we are doing a TEAS test, I think, January 9th. Um, yeah, so if, if you want to sign up for that, that's available. Yes? Uh, if someone is missing a non-science prereq, can they still take the TEAS in January? A non-science prereq? No, you have to have them done. Yes? And if you took English, would you still have to take the English one? If you took AP English and you want to use that, 
you have to provide a transcript of the AP score, not just the, the, the high school transcript, but the AP score. And it depends on what score you got as to if you get uh, t um, the GPA points for that. Yes. As for the receipt or the Bakke waiver, does it have to be for like the current semester or it could be like previous semester is like? No, it should be the current semester. The semester has yeah. To be. Other questions? Way in the back. Yes. Um, so when, if we do get a postcard in the mail, is that like saying we were not accepted or we were accepted? Both. It, well, if, you're, if there's something missing, Say you're missing one transcript. You get a postcard that says you're missing a transcript. You have 14 days to get it to us. So sometimes you get one that says something is missing. OK? What about if you get one that says you're accepted? How much time do you have like, to notify? Um, seven days. Seven days. Until we get way down to the alternate list when we're you know, three weeks before school and we have an open spot, we'll say 24 hours. And then we keep going down the alternate list until we fill that spot. If you don't answer the phone, you know, you don't get the spot. Other questions? That's it? Oh, wait, one in the back? Uh, if you're on the alternate list, you get notified by a postcard and an email? Yes. If you're on an alternate list, yes, that is correct. To meet with you, do we just email you at your email? Yep. You gave us? Mm -hmm. But realize we're almost out, you know, next week it's finals running out of time here, so I don't know how much time I have available, but I'll try to fit you in. But you'll have to complete, you know, you probably can't apply this year, because you'll have to retake the T's test. Yes? Volunteer hours do not count for us, they do for a loanee. Yes? How long is a T score valid? It's usually valid for about two years. They update the test about every two years. And for some reason, they had T's 5, and they didn't name it T6. They called it ATITs. I'm assuming the next one's going to come out, but we usually call it grandfather it in. So we take the old test for like a year and the new test together for one year, and then we just take the new test. Okay. So that's kind of how it works. Yes? For the T test, when we take it, do we get our scores that same day? Or yes, not? if you take the computer version. Yes, you can take a paper and pencil. I think Cal State might give a paper pencil. Then it takes a, a couple days to get the results. It takes, to you. Yeah, almost seven to ten days to get a paper result. We only do computer. It's much faster, and, and all our tests are in computer too. And the nursing test is computer. We encourage computer tests. Yes. What about for healthcare experience? Like if you're not certified or like. Not certified. Well, it depends. Depends on your if you're if you're a caregiver, just a caregiver. No. It depends. Yes. Question? No. no. Anybody else? Oh, way in the back. Can we use uh, anthropology as an interchange for sociology? For no, period? we started to do that, but then we found out Cal State East Bay didn't accept it. So now we're only using sociology because you can't transfer it to an, a bachelor's program. And that's what we want. We want everybody to come in here and transfer to get their bachelor's. So we do not accept anthropology. Anything else? Yes? It's you'll sign a consent and you'll email it or fax it to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's it, thank you all for coming. If you have an individual question, come on up and I'll try we'll try to answer it. Thank you.